episodes don't get used to it I'm not gonna lie (laughs) don't get used to it I'm just trying to get back in the swing of things and hopefully this will get me more motivated to start recording on a more normal basis I will get back to a normal schedule I just had a lot going on I really have and I know I said that last time but things happen unexpectedly and I'm just gonna just you know be honest that I just hadn't been in the mood to record, and um, hopefully I'm getting back to myself, so with everything that is happening, everything that's changing, feeling a little better mentally and physically, so we'll see how everything turns out. Now this podcast is probably going to be a mess, as the last one was, where I'm just throwing it together. I'm not... Um, this was just going to basically be us just shooting the shit, basically, just talking. And um, as you could tell by the title, there won't be much editing, so you'll probably hear a lot of pauses and chairs squeaking and phones going off and emails going off on my computer. You'll probably hear all that, but you know it's all good. We're all, you know, we're, we're cool. It happens. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy episode thirty-one. All right, so let's talk about one of the best things that has happened during this whole quarantine, COVID mess, all this stuff. And that has been the genius that is Swiss Beats and Timbaland for creating Versus. Now, for those of you who don't know what Versus is, and a lot of people have a, even people who've been watching it, they're still confused as to what Versus is. And obviously, some celebrities are a little concerned about why they don't understand what Versus is as well. A couple of them have been a little delusional as to why they're not doing Versus, but we'll get into that a little bit later, Trey Songs. So, Versus is basically you take two different artists or two different bands whatever and they were let's keep it real it's basically people who were out like in the 80s and 90s probably the early 2000s people who have had longevity in their careers you have to have at least 20 hits let's just start right there you have to have at least 20 hits that people know and it's not necessarily hits that you have done but you have people in here that are artists as well as producers So you can do a song, you can put a song on your versus playlist that you have produced. Like Babyface was doing that. He had his own music and he had songs that he produced for other people, which we know Babyface is one of the legendary producers as well. He's an artist, but he's also one of our greatest producers of all time. So anyway, you had these two artists or two groups, whatever, you had them going against each other and they just play their hits back to back. Now, most of them are very similar, like they may have been out at the same time or, and I'm talking about the songs that they play against each other and not necessarily, but like some of them may play their first hit and then the next person plays their first hit or whatever. And it's just been so good and refreshing to see this and to be reminded of so many of these great songs and for and not only that for these artists who may not be quote unquote in the popular mainstream right now but it's kind of bringing them back to the forefront and just reliving these songs that you know were hits for them and even songs that may not have been hits like on the radio or whatever but they were songs from their albums that we loved you know that people wanted to be videos or like cult classics I guess you can call them you know that they'll do like in a concert or whatever and everybody knows knows the lyrics and singing along or rapping along or whatever so it's been real I mean it's just been a genius thing that 
came out of all of this mess that we've been going on going through and you've had other artists like you've had um d nice who he was getting on there like at the beginning of during covid when everybody was at home and quarantined themselves he was getting on there every night and just doing just doing his thing on the ones and twos and that was getting a lot of us through then you also have dj cassidy who has um passed the mic where he has all these artists like usually from the 80s and 90s and they do their hits and he has all of them like it's basically just passing the mic you know he he has them like he's he's communicating with them and they sing their song or do you know do part of their song whatever then it goes to the next artist it's like a pass the mic type thing even though they're not it's a virtual pass the mic of course but it's it's been amazing. It's just been great. And as someone who loves music, I just can't imagine anything better. I think my favorite verses so far, oh, this is hard. Oh, my favorite one so far has probably been Brandy and Monica. I really like that one. I mean, Erica Badu and Jill Scott was cool too. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really, and I'm not even going to put Gladys and Patty in a favorite or whatever, because those are just two of our living legendary treasures that are going to be everyone's favorite. And if they weren't, that's your problem. The worst, of course, in my opinion, was, who the hell was it? Was it Jagged Edge and 112? See, I can't even remember, but that one was garbage. And it has exposed, like, I don't feel bad. Like, before I got my internet upgraded, I didn't feel bad for having bad internet service because, and they were one of the reasons why I said, ooh, I got to get my internet upgraded. You know, like, if I'm going to be home doing all this stuff and working and, you know, whatever, like, I got to have some steady internet service, honey, and I stream a lot? Oh, no. So it's it's been funny, though, seeing these celebrities that have bad Internet service, too. So it's not just us poor folk, you know. But anyway, it has been just good. I think that did it already happen? I wasn't the one with Jada Kiss. No, I'm sorry, not Jada Kiss. Good Lord. Hold on. Jeezy and T.I. Jeezy and T.I. Now, I. I like both of them, don't get me wrong. I'm more of a Jeezy fan than a T.I. fan, but I like both of them. But I wasn't planning on watching that. I didn't, uh, I had better things to do for two and a half hours or however, however long it goes. But I think that was the last one, or have they even done it yet? I don't even know. I've lost track. But there there have been some good matchups, and it's just amazing. Now, a lot of people wonder why some people get on there and sing and some don't. Now, from what I understood what the verses was, is that they were just playing their music. It wasn't necessarily that they were going to be on there playing, I mean, singing live. Now, some people do, like Babyface, I know he was just getting over COVID when he did his with Teddy Riley. And we know Teddy Riley can't sing, so he wasn't going to sing anything live unless he used that voice box. And that's no shade. It's just it is what it is. But Babyface, he did one song. He pulled out his guitar, and I think he did one song, like, vocally. And, um, yeah, but most of them, they don't sing live. Like, when it's just mainly just them playing music, you know. I mean, it would be cute if they did, you know, sing live more. But, I mean, I think it's better that we hear the um, the tracks you know the actual musical tracks from the album and we can vibe to it much better now we'll say auntie gladys baby doll mother came out there and she sang from beginning to end now she knew what versus was she knew that she was going to be singing to a track and that they were going to be playing on track but mother got up there and she let y'all know that at 70 plus years old i am still that one I am still going to sit out here I do Vegas still I'm still performing night after night and I do this you know I come from the old school where we sang you know what I mean that's what she gave and 
you know, Patty was too grand for that. Patty would give you a lyric here and there, but you know, it's cool. It, it, it was cool though. You know, we loved it, but Brandy and Monica, they didn't really sing, you know, too much. They did here and there, but we already know they both can sing. So, I mean, it's, that wasn't a question. Um, but I think Monica went in with the intent to just play her music and Brandy wanted to do both, but you know, it is what it is, but it was, it was great to see. I love watching versus. I can't wait to see who, if anybody, they're going to keep doing it. I hope they do. And I just can't wait to see who else is going to be on here. Um, but let's talk about some artists who are a little delusional and like let's start with miss trey songs first girl so about a month or so ago maybe a few weeks a month ago he put out that he is not he has no plans to do versus because he's not in competition with no one but himself okay girl so that's not what it's about it's not a competition it is just two artists who are playing their music back to back. And if you have watched Versus, you see these artists, they compliment each other. They talk about what fans they are. They have stories behind their songs and everything like that. Girl, we know you don't have that. First of all, you don't have 20 hits. Let's, let's, let's just start right there. You don't have 20 hits, Trey songs. Okay. You've been out for a little while, but you don't have 20 hit songs. You don't. So you wouldn't even be called to be on it anyway. Okay, let's start right there. And the only person you could probably go up against is Chris Brown. And Chris Brown has 20 hits, so he could do it easily. But in my opinion, maybe you and Neo could do it, but Neo doesn't have 20 hits either. Neo got some hits, and I mean, you got some hits too, girl, but you don't have the hits that are required for versus you don't have the prerequisites that are required for versus so let's just get that out there right now so that's why you haven't been asked and you're not going to be asked to be on versus and there's that so I just wanted to put that out I was going to re read Swiss Beats when I first was going to do this podcast but I got sick and um, had some other stuff going on so I didn't get a chance to do it around the time when Swiss Beats was trying to say Janet didn't have her hits and of course he backpedaled and you know I mean he did it with the quickness because everybody was getting on him honey they were getting on you Swiss and you just woo, you but you you had to know that you didn't believe that you said what you said about Janet Jackson the legendary iconic Janet Jackson not having enough hits to go against Missy Elliott. I mean, child. So anyway, that's my thing on Versus. I do hope it continues, and I just want people to get the gist of what Versus is. It's not a live singing show. It's not a competition. It's just two artists who are very similar, who are out around the same time, um, and they're just doing their thing. They're just doing their thing for entertainment purposes, and we just have to just either watch it or not I choose not to watch all of them and there it is so what else has been going on there has been a lot going on since the last podcast that I have done and um, I've had some health issues that I'm going to get into a little later that have kind of prevented me from doing my podcast um, consistently so I'll get into all that stuff later. I know because I hate it too when people throw out something and they don't go into it, but it's just something I'm not ready to talk about right now. But yeah, we'll eventually get into that later. I haven't really been watching that much on um, like anything really new on Netflix. Now I did watch the uh, Christopher Watts and uh, Shanann Watts documentary because I am doing a podcast for my Not Another True Crime podcast. I am doing a, it was suggested by one of my um, subscribers for me to do that one. And I had always been interested in that case. I don't really like to talk about when 
older people, like elderly people and children are involved. But this case always intrigued me. And it seemed like it started a chain of events of, you know, all these men finally And not just men. I know it happens with women, too. But it was mainly around this time, it was mainly men who their wives or girlfriends or exes were coming up missing. And um, they try to act so, you know, like, concerned and everything like that. But they're not very good actors and actresses. So you kind of start looking at them with the the side eye and come to find out, I mean, hello, they're the ones who did it. But... So that one's going to be, I've been doing a lot of research for that. Other than that, on Netflix and Hulu, I haven't really been watching anything on there. Um, let me see. Yeah, I've just been, oh, let me, I've been watching Girlfriends and Half and Half from uh, the TV sitcoms that were on back in the day. Oh, my goodness. And is it me? Now, I was an adult when Girlfriends came out. I was in my 20s. And now, as a 40-year-old woman watching that, Joan was really annoying on Girlfriends. She was really, truly, like, annoying on there. And I used to think it was funny and a little just, I just thought that she was quirky or whatever. And then, But she was really, like, too much, you know. And But I still like her. I still like her character, even though she did a lot. But anyway, so... That's all I've been really watching on Netflix. I haven't watched anything new. If you have any suggestions of anything that I should be watching on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime, (laughs) let me know and I will get on those. People know I love YouTube. I've been a fan of YouTube since its inception. I just remember watching YouTube back in the day and Um, This is back when it first started and my job at the time, like we were able to get YouTube. It wasn't caught on yet, you know, where they started, where jobs started blocking it. You know, it wasn't caught on at the time. And this is back when they used to have like, it may have been broken up into like three or four parts, but you could watch like whole sitcoms on there. Like people would upload like sitcoms of Martin and a different world and uh, everybody loves Raymond, you know, shows like that. They would put those on there and I would just be sitting at work just with that, my little uh, browser, just, you know, minimize real low in the corner and just watching that and cracking up, just cracking up. And, but YouTube has evolved. YouTube has really just turned into an empire and it's become an empire so much that people on YouTube these personalities are becoming millionaires off of it for different things I mean you can pretty much do anything on YouTube I mean they have people on there who get on there and they just chew food that ASMR crap I mean and people watch it I have never been interested in it but people watch it I'm just like, well, damn. And these people are becoming millionaires and getting endorsement deals and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Wow. (laughs) That's all I can say. That is all I can say. But, um, yeah, and I've been watching, like, I'm a fan of a lot of people on YouTube. Like, I mainly started getting back into YouTube because they started putting a lot of good documentaries on there. And, um, you know, like some independent film makers were putting their stuff on there like on their channels and they were really good like there's this guy out of Detroit he does a lot of things on the Detroit mob I think his name is Al Prophet and um he's like an Italian guy and he but he is like really um he really does a lot when it comes to and it's very informational and I've been telling like I have I have family and friends in Detroit and I've been telling them you know about this guy who does these documentaries about y'all's history and y'all's crazy mob and drug history and everything like that. And I mean, they are really into it and they've been going places and like looking at these uh, quote unquote landmarks <laughs> that, you know, things uh, where all of this wonderful craziness has happened where it happened back in the day. And it was just so much that it really intrigued me. So I, you know, I watch a lot of documentaries on there, but I also watch a lot of personalities. I used to watch a lot of family vlogging on YouTube. 
and what family vloggers are basically and it, I, the main reason why I watched them was because I was nosy I just wanted to see what people you know like I would just watch people just and when I look back on it it's so boring really but it's just watching people just in their everyday lives but you get into it because like these families like they start having children or you start you start watching their children grow up or you know you see them go from living in one city and moving to another city or you just see them going from 10,000 subscribers to 300,000 subscribers to close to a million if not over a million subscribers and it's just really fun but then some of them just start getting annoying after a while because they really start thinking that they're something even when their channels start floundering down which is what's happening to a lot of family vloggers because it's not really a thing anymore and especially these interracial couples it's kind of getting played out now I mean there are new ones that pop up here and there but you know whatever so but I also really got into YouTube when I used to watch a lot of reality shows I used to watch like every reality show and um like from Housewives to Love and Hip Hop to um what else is on you know like all that crap like that and I would um want to see other people's views and a lot of them started doing a lot of them still do they do but I don't watch as many I don't watch really that many reality shows I think the only two I really watch are Real Housewives of Atlanta and I give and take with that one and I watch the Real Housewives of Potomac but getting into those um I wanted to see what other people had to say and they would just do like reviews on them or if I would miss a show then I would just watch the review like on certain people because they would give like real good reviews and then a lot of them started turning in you know like a lot of these uh personalities started getting real big and then you had haters that came along and then you got all these different sectors of YouTube now black YouTube and um it's very interesting you have like the beef sector which I'm very intrigued about which is just about a bunch of YouTubers who just get on there and they just I just I learned about doxing I didn't know what doxing was if you don't know doxing is like when you find information out on somebody like it could be their address it could be something about their family just any information like their history if they filed bankruptcy with any kind of information that you find on them but you make it public that's what these people are doing it's crazy it is crazy what what goes on and you have so many of them like they were friends and now they're not friends and you have all these alliances and you I mean it's crazy it's just like a real life big brother except for a little bit more dirty but it's it's interesting so that's all I really watch I mainly just watch like a lot of YouTube that and a lot of news channels that's all I really watch like my TV is usually on um msnbc if golden girls isn't on it's usually on msnbc sometimes cnn sometimes cnn gets on my nerves um they whine too much on cnn for me but it's cute like i love i gotta watch my chris cuomo i get mad because he comes on the same time as my girl rachel maddow does but um i usually flip back and forth between those but uh yeah so that's really all i've been watching on tv what else has been going on with me just working from home it's just become a part of the norm um I don't know what I don't even know what it would feel like to go back in the office and now with my job I'm used to working from home I work from home three days a week normally like my normal schedule I work from home three days a week I go in the office two days a week and I work from home three days a week so I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal but it has been since March what like since the last week of March I think we have been home working every day I have to have permission like I went to go take a flu shot and I'm usually against flu shots but I take it because I live with my grandmother and you know I got to be extra cautious and careful so I've been taking the flu shot the past few years and it hasn't done anything to me knock on all sorts of wood let me knock on my desk real quick but um yeah I've been doing that so yeah but I had to have permission to go on there for that um you know my laptop has been acting up so I had to have permission to go on go in the building for that you know and it's just and it's like I mean there are people on the base that are working of course not just the police that work there and other people but yeah it's it, that's been interesting when I do have to go on base which I've only been up there like maybe three times since all this has happened 
but um yeah it's it's a it's different everything is just different you know and as I mentioned before I think I said on my last podcast that you know we're all just adjusting to a different way of life and we're all going to need some type of counseling or some something some kind of prayer which you should be praying anyway regardless of who you pray to it's it's just become a lot it's become a lot over these past dang what almost how many months is, I'm, I've lost track what is this November good lord What's, it's crazy it's like eight months wow that's that's a mess that just sitting here I'm just I'm really thrown back like thinking about that but um yeah so that's really all that's been going on with me just a bunch of mess still being a mess still nonsense just going on and just trying to deal with things still trying to build I met with the, I met with the editor I met with the editor a few weeks ago and I'll be meeting with them again to um, have a couple books that I'm working on and I'm just thinking about if I want to work with a professional editor which I think would be best especially starting out because I'm not the best speller or the best um, uh, what do you say putting words together I guess you say because I like making up words a lot if you haven't noticed and yeah so yeah I've been doing that so I have a lot of stuff that I've been doing behind the scenes and when I'm not doing this I have a lot that I've been doing I do I, I've, I've been really working a lot behind the scenes and trying to keep my mind off of other things that have been going on and I just really want to keep it keep it going just keep what I'm doing I love doing this podcast someone asked me why I got into doing podcasting I think I'll talk about that on the next show why I got into podcasting I don't think I've ever talked about that before I know I did a post on my um website maybe a few years ago about radio about my history in radio that I used to work in radio I was never an on-air personality but I did work behind the scenes and I saw a lot of things and it let me know that I didn't want to work for a radio station and uh I think even today, even though radio is not as popular as it was even 10, 15 years ago when I did um, work at a radio station part time as a board operator, I think it, you know, because everyone on radio now, because radio has lost its popularity because of so many other things that we have to listen to, mainly streaming with cars having, you know, access to where you can listen to your own music anytime you want to. I think that the only way to be a radio personality nowadays is to be a celebrity. You have all these celebrities on these radio shows, and that's basically what keeps people listening. Now, I think that's sad because radio was supposed to be like public access. And if you understand the history of radio, you will understand that what's happening in radio now is really sad, and especially for people who you know, we're once former radio stars and now they've had to um, kind of go back to doing podcasts and internet radio and public access television and things like that. But, you know, it happens. Things evolve and change and radio's hanging on by a thread, but it's still good when I do listen to the radio I mainly even though we have some good old school stations here in Columbus I mainly listen to NPR and that's very rare usually when I'm in my car I'm listening to either my music on my phone like I'm streaming or I'm listening to a podcast usually a podcast and same thing when I'm working out or whatever I'm either listening to music or a podcast my own music or a podcast on my phone so yeah it's been it's been a mess it's been different but um got the holidays coming up the holidays are going to be different this year like everything else is it's going to be a lot different than we're used to I know a lot of families said they're not getting together like their households are just going to be doing stuff and it's sad but it's understandable you know like 
when it seems like every time people get in a big group, something happens, you know, like somebody gets exposed to it, somebody gets sick. And not everybody, because there are a lot of people out here that are cautious or whatever. So you had to make sure that the people that you're going to be around, that everyone is doesn't have it, doesn't have the virus at all. You really have to watch that and be cautious. The last thing you want to do, especially around the holidays and with family, is to make another family member sick, especially your elder family members. You really, because they're very susceptible to it. And with me living with my grandmother, I had to be very careful. Like, I mean, I go out and I go to the store. I've only like been out to a bar once and I felt so weird being there because it was just like everybody had on mask and, you know, you got to pull down your mask to drink. And, you know, I mean, it was just it was just too much. It was just like it wasn't even fun. And I mean, I know there are other places to go out to, whatever, and things like that, but I'm mainly a homebody anyway, but even I get stir crazy sometimes, you know, it's, it's just different. It's just a different world and we just had to get used to it. And I've been really trying to just stay focused on things at home. Like I've been doing a lot of cleaning, a lot of getting rid of stuff on top of continuing to build this brand and um, work on other things that I've been wanting to work on for a long time. So, yeah, it's it's been a lot, but we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. We have a new president-elect now, a new vice president-elect. And I'm really hyped about, I didn't know too much about Kamala Harris. And the things I heard about her, of course, at first weren't good, but unlike other people, um, before spreading what I thought I knew, I actually went and did some research and I talked to some people who I knew that know her, you know, um, some people, I, there's a couple of people I went to college with who actually work in California legislature. So they knew her very well and they knew the ins and outs of what happened and things like that. And all you have to do is ask people, you know, instead of just assuming stuff, all you have to do is just ask, you know, um, she's tried to clear it up as many times, but you know, she, but that, but I mean, I'm the type of person too. I'm not going to keep explaining my damn self. I don't care who you are. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, but I'm just happy that, you know, we have a black woman and I know she's Indian too. I know she's, you know, Asian, uh, South Asian American as well. Um, but everyone's looking at her as a black woman. Let's keep it real. The same thing with President Obama. You know, sometimes y'all want to clarify mixed people as being black, and then other times you want to clarify them and say, oh, no, they're not black. They got this in them. I mean, another reason why black folks will never get along, but I digress. But, you know, not only the fact that it's a black woman in an executive office of our country, but she's an HBCU grad. And she's a member of the Divine Nine. I mean, that's who would have thought? Who would have thought? I mean, not even our first, our nation's first black president went to a HBCU, which is fine. You know, I mean, I guess if you get into Harvard, you know, I mean, hey, you know, I mean, I guess that's something else, you know, something different. But, um, yeah, but that's all because I'm just rambling now. I just wanted to put out something and, you know, just let y'all know that I'm still here. The podcast is still going. Nothing has changed. I'll keep doing the podcast and also my other podcast, Not Another True Crime Podcast, will still be going. So just stay tuned to a lot that's going on. I know I haven't been consistent, but once I get back in the swing of things, Stuff will be consistent. I promise you that. I promise you that things will be more consistent going forward. So as always, thank you all for listening to Danny B Speaks, the podcast. This is episode 31. And just, you know, just bear with me, y'all. It's always something that's just been coming up. It's nothing that I can control. And I will get, as I mentioned just a little while ago, I will get more, um, consistent I will and I know you could tell like probably in my voice and my demeanor that I'm not still 100% but I've been doing better so 
just bear with your girl and everything's going to be okay. But as always, thank you for listening and taking the time to check me out. Don't forget, you can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, and now Amazon Podcasts. So check me out on all those. And of course, catch up on the blog, listen to the podcast on my website, dannybspeaks.com for all updates and everything like that that I have going on. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please send me an email at dannybspeaks at gmail.com. The same if you would like to be a sponsor of the podcast or my website, vice versa. If you would like me to be a sponsor of you or any of your endeavors, please hit me up, dannybspeaks at gmail.com. I got a lot of things coming, so just stay tuned. Bear with me. Not Another True Crime Podcast will be coming back as well. And as always... I'm appreciative and thank you for tuning in once again to spend some time with me and I will catch you all on the next one. Be safe, take care of yourself and each other, and we'll do this again. Peace.